This is Kevin Cole at the University of Nebraska. The topic is thermodynamics, and the example is a throttle with hydraulic oil. Another name for a throttle is a pressure reducing valve. So in this schematic, I've shown the throttle as a, uh, a valve. We're given uh, a certain mass flow rate of hydraulic oil, and it enters at 20 C, and it enters at 10 megapascals, and downstream it's at a lower pressure, 0.3 megapascals, so the pressure has gone down. We're asked to find the change in internal energy of the oil and the delta T of the oil. We're given a specific heat uh, at constant pressure of 1,900 joules per kilogram per Kelvin, and we're given the density. Now, the process for a throttle, the, the defining event for a throttle is that the enthalpy is unchanged. And this comes, you can show this from the uh, open system energy equation with the standard assumptions to be a steady flow in the throttle, neglecting kinetic and potential energy. <clears throat> the throttle is small, so there's no uh, elevation change. A, uh, pipes are generally the same diameter upstream and downstream, so anyway, kinetic energy is small. Uh, there's no time for heat transfer. And there's no shaft. All right. <clears throat> to find the internal energy, we're going to use the definition of enthalpy. Enthalpy is a defined property. Enthalpy is defined to be the internal energy plus the pressure times specific, the specific volume. So if I use the fact that the enthalpy is unchanged, I could write U1 plus P1 V1 equals U2 plus P2 V2. And then <clears throat> I could... Uh, I want to also apply the fact that the oil is, I'm going to take it to be incompressible. Now, incompressible means the density doesn't change and the specific volume does not change. So I'm going to say V1 equals V2 equals V for an incompressible case. And then I want to use, replace V1 and V2 by little v, and I'm going to solve for, I take this guy and solve for, the internal energy change, U2 minus U1, is equal to P1 minus P2, parenthesis, V. And now I can compute this. Uh, well, one more thing. We're given the density. Density is 1 over the specific volume. The units are reversed. So let's compute this as a pressure change. Uh, my pressure uh, at the high end, P1, is a 10 megapascals. I'm going to write that as 10 times 10 to the 6th. And then I'll subtract off uh, the P2, which is 0 0.3 times 10 to the 6th. And the units there are uh, newtons per meter squared. And I'm going to multiply that by a specific volume V. Well, I'm going to write that as 1 over 883, 1 over the density, kilograms per meter cubed. And uh, <clears throat> when I compute that, I got plenty of space here. That's uh, 10985, and the units are uh, Newton meter per kilogram. It's the same as a joule per kilogram. Okay, so that's responsive to part A. That's the change in internal energy in joules per kilogram. Um, since we were asked for a little delta little u. Uh, the temperature, part B, I'm going to find that by, for an incompressible fluid, the change in internal energy is the specific heat times the temperature change. And also, if it's incompressible, whether it's specific heat at constant volume or specific heat at constant pressure, it's the same value. So I could just call it C. Um, let's solve for delta T. <clears throat> delta T is going to simply be delta U divided by the specific heat with value which we've got. So let's do that computation. It's going to be 10985 joules per kilogram divided by 1900 joules per kilogram per Kelvin. <coughs> and that computes to be uh, 5.78 degrees centigrade. Now what's that about? Degrees centigrade or degrees Kelvin? Well, a delta T in Kelvin is the same as a delta T in centigrade because the degrees are the same size. And I could also write, you know, T2 is uh, delta T plus T1, which is 20, I'm sorry, 
0.578 plus 20 equals 25.78 degrees. <clears throat> but we're asked to find the change in temperature. There it is. Okay, I want to make a comment about what's going on. If we've got an incompressible fluid in a throttle, the uh, pressure goes down and the temperature goes up for an incompressible fluid. And I want to be very careful about saying for an incompressible fluid because if the fluid is different, we can get a different temperature outcome. But if it's incompressible uh, for hydraulic oil, I want to talk about uh, what I will call an unintended throttle. I can't, I can't write today. Unintended throttle. Now, early in my career, I worked at uh, a major manufacturer of, of uh, agricultural equipment, and I worked on power steering. So imagine I've got a power steering tube. This is a steel tube, say. We've got oil flowing in here. And if there's a place in the tube where there's a, a problem, a crimp in the line, if you do a bend badly, you can get a crimp. If the uh, tube is installed badly, you can get a crimp. Uh, if there's a fitting that's been that's blocked with a chip of, of uh, metal, you can get a, a place where there's an unintended throttle. And the flow, the throttle causes A delta T in the flow that you can that you can find by touch. The human hand has many many nerve endings and is very sensitive to temperature. And five degrees is easily measured. Even even up half of a degree you can measure. So it's a spiritual experience, feeling the line and finding where it's warm. Then you know you've just passed a place where there's an unintended throttle. All right, let's recap. We're looking at a throttle. Another name for a throttle is a pressure reducing valve. The defining process for a throttle is that enthalpy is unchanged. And we can find internal energy if we remember the definition of enthalpy as U plus PV. We use the fact that if the fluid is incompressible, we only need one value of the specific heat and we can find temperature by its relationship with internal energy, delta U is C times delta T. And if you remember for an incompressible fluid, in a throttle the temperature goes up, then all will be well.